session of the Mayor and Council of the City of Bisbee County of Cochise and State of Arizona to be held on Tuesday, January 7th, 2020 at 7 p.m. at the City Hall Building, 915 South Tolkerville Road, Bisbee, Arizona. Ms. Coronado, would you please call the roll? Mayor Pro Tem Lewis Pollock. Here. Councilmember Joni Giacomino. Here. Councilmember Bill Higgins. Here. Mayor David M. Smith. Here. Councilmember Leslie Johns. Here. Councilmember Joan Hansen. Here. Councilmember Anna Klein. Here. City staff, Teresa Coleman, City Manager. Ashley Coronado, City Clerk. Carrie Bagley, Finance Director. Joelle Landers, Personnel Director. Jesus Haro, Public Works Director. Albert Chavez, Police Chief. George Castillo, Fire Chief. James Ledbetter, City Attorney. Thank you. Um, for a moment of silence, um, I'd like us to take a moment of silence, uh, hoping that uh, cool heads and sanity prevails uh, with the ongoing events that are unfolding as we speak in Iran and Iraq. So please join with me. Thank you. Would you uh, please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome, Happy New Year. It's good to see you. Thanks for joining us, uh, both uh, in-house, as they say, and um, out-house, which is the, uh, of course, I guess that could be, if we're talking about Facebook, that could be appropriate, I don't know. In any event, um, I wanted to take uh, just a minute here, talk about uh, things that I've been involved in the last two weeks. Uh, since our last meeting, and um, that was December uh, 19th, um, I assisted the fire department and police department on a fatal fire investigation in Old Bisbee. And I wanted to take a real quick uh, uh, a, a second to talk about the, uh, again, the chief, your, your department did a, a terrific job in, in stopping that fire. Um, there wasn't anything you could have done about the uh, decedent. Uh, unfortunately, that was a done deal. Uh, but uh, you stopped that fire in, in a historic area without spread to the adjoining building. So it was truly a job well done. Thank you, sir. Um, on the uh, 19th in the evening, I presented uh, Scout Troop uh, number one, our own Scout Troop, a $500 check from a local foundation. Um, they just wanted the mayor to do it. I have no idea why, but I was always pleased to, to, uh, to do that. So it, uh, it was, it's always good. That was at the senior center. So we had seniors there, and we had the, the scouts there, and, and it was a lot of fun. On the 20th, I attended a legislative meeting in Sierra Vista. Rick Mueller had invited me to the mayor of Sierra Vista. And uh, we sat down with our two uh, state legislators and uh, senator and discussed local issues. Um, I once again hammered them about PSPRS and got a glazed eye look. Um, in any event, um, it, it was actually pretty well received, and I wanted to publicly thank Mayor Mueller for that uh, invitation. This, he does this every year. We were able to meet last year also. And um, on the 21st, I attended a Ward 1 meeting, and uh, that was at uh, the uh, Central School Project, and was well attended. And um, uh, Bill, certainly, as a Ward 1 representative, was there. And uh, Leslie, 
and I wanted to congratulate Leslie particularly. Uh, she just did an outstanding job in facilitating that meeting and uh, getting information from the constituents uh, as to what uh, their needs and, and, uh, uh, and problems were. So well done, Leslie, thank you. Um, on the 29th, um, I had the honor of um, the uh, rabbi from uh, um, Sierra Vista contacted me and uh, asked if I would uh, light the main candles with the menorah on the uh, last day of Hanukkah. And so uh, I did that at Grassy Park, and uh, it was a very, it was a beautiful celebration, and uh, uh, it was interesting because we had um, people attending that were, knew nothing about it, they were tourists, and happened to be Jewish, and happened to happen on that uh, ceremony, so it was, it was kind of fun to uh, be able to be involved in that. And then uh, today, uh, I participated in a, a PBS interview, uh, which is a uh, follow-up interview on our uh, anti-opioid program, uh, uh, Cochise uh, Addiction Recovery Project. And that'll be airing um, on the 13th uh, and the 14th. Uh, Chief Achave was uh, there feeding me my lines and, uh, and uh, Monica. Uh, Monica is the uh, <coughs> young lady, uh, AmeriCorps uh, district worker that uh, uh, is being uh, compensated uh, through a grant from <coughs> PARI uh, uh, for addiction recovery. So that was uh, that, that was uh, very very nice to have those two there also. And um, lastly, I just wanted to uh, thank the BAC Bisbee Arts Commission. Uh, as many of us know, they have a, a cigarette machine that they have repurposed and it has tiny pieces of art in it from all different artists. And it's in the, um, uh, if you will, the convention center, you know, outside of the table's entrance. And um, it's making money. And that money then comes back and is provided in grants which we vote on and which, as you recall, we voted on last, last meeting, a whole bunch of them. There's more coming. And there's more coming, all right. And so they presented uh, us with a, um, a really nice uh, piece of art, and it's signed by all of the artists. So I just kind of show you like this. And, uh, we'll hang that in City Hall, so it'll be prominently displayed, and I just wanted to publicly thank BAC for that really nice gift. <coughs> and with that, we'll go to the call to public. And the first uh, call to public is uh, Nolan Bouguet. Welcome, sir. Hello. Check one. Uh, street lights on all night are a huge waste of energy and are of concern to our fragile planet. With wildfires and major hurricanes devastating human civilization, the time to act in favor of the environment is now. As well as helping the planet, less street lights and busy will mean less energy bills for the city. There are so many important things that the city can be spending its money on rather than wasteful life. The Dark Skies movement is hugely popular in Disney. It is encouraging people to look up and be amazed by worlds beyond our own. A lot of people in Bisbee also want lights to go out because people naturally sleep better in the dark. One study even found that women who live under a bright street light are more likely to get breast cancer. Our brains produce melatonin from darkness, and when we turn night into day artificially, we lose that chemical balance in our body. As well as lights on all night may make us feel more secure, there is no evidence that street lights actually stop crime. More criminals even, many criminals even like lights because it is less conspicuous than a flashlight. There are many reasons for busy to turn off street lights. For the planet, for our pocketbooks, and for our health. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, next is uh, Ms. Claire Chafee. Welcome. Hi, 
know if you can see my voice because I have bronchitis, but we're at council. Um, um, I would like to know why mayor and council have not put out there for a permanent city attorney. It's a little late now as Mr. Bedfeather's um, contract expires at the end of this month. Again, we fall short in responding to something that truly needs to be done and discussed and concentrate on things that aren't as necessary at this time. Also, in regards to asking the city attorney for his assistance in revising the ordinances and charter appears to be fine to me, but rewriting them himself we are paying him $10,000 a month to write these. That's why we have committees, boards, and commissions. Then he can check. Excuse me, I'm going to cough. Hold on. Okay, sorry. Then he can check they do not overstep state or federal statutes and laws. I do have a, a, a question while I'm here. I know you're not supposed to answer anything, but maybe you can tell me where in the in the, the meeting I can ask it. I want to know what the the appeals board for property management code is. I don't know. Is there somebody that can tell me what that does? I know I'm not supposed. To, you're not supposed to answer questions. The answers to that would be available on your website, ma'am. I tried to find out, but I couldn't. I couldn't find the section. It would be under under commissions, <coughs> and um, um, it should give the mission of that particular committee. I did look under that. Yeah, I will. I will reach out to you tomorrow. Good. Wonderful. Thank you so very much. Thank you for your time. Thank you, ma'am. and we will follow those requirements. I know your requirements, but we also have history, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. <clears throat> Good old accounts payable. I move that we pay accounts payable in the amount of $200,748.92. Second. We have a motion. We have a second. Do we have any questions? Hearing none, all uh, those in favor of paying accounts payable signify by stating aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The motion passes unanimously. Cons 
Sub agenda items A through whoa, okay. <laughs> whoa. A approval of the resignation of Lawrence Phillips from the Streets and Infrastructure Committee. B approval of the reappointment of Carrie Bagley to the Public Safety Retirement Personnel Board. C approval of the appointment of William Brunson to the Library Advisory Board. D approval of the reappointment of Thomas Patterson to the Police and Fire Advisory Committee. E, approval of the reappointment of Thomas Patterson to the Board of Adjustment. F, approval of the reappointment of Al Hopper to the Appeals Board for the Property Maintenance Code. G, approval of the reappointment of Nancy Piranha to the Planning and Zoning Commission. H, approval of the reappointment of Dwayne Doan to the Community Sustainability Commission. I, Approval of the appointment of Al Anderson to the Appeals Board for the Property Maintenance Code. J. Approval of the appointment of Todd Conklin to the Appeals Board for the Property Management Code. K. Approval of the appointment of John Crow to the Appeals Board for the Property Maintenance Code. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to pull item A. You'd like to pull which? Item A. All right. Item A is pulled uh, for discussion. Do we have a motion on the remaining items? I move that we approve the consent agenda items B through K. I second. I'll, uh, Ms. Cardo. Council, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Pollock. Aye. Council Member Giacomino. Aye. Council Member Higgins. Aye. Council Member Johns. Aye. Council Member Hansen. Aye. Council Member Klein. Aye. Mayor Smith. Aye. The, uh, Consent agenda items A through K or B through K, K are approved. Item number A, Mr. Pollock. I wanted to say a few words about uh, about Larry. I got to know him as council liaison to the Streets and Infrastructure Committee, and I'd like to recognize his knowledge and experience uh, in the field of asphalt and pavements, and to point out that he'll be very hard to replace and that uh, I wish to, for the record, personally thank him for his 11 years of service on the Streets and Infrastructure Committee. Yes, thank you. As a prior member of that committee, myself, and then council liaison to that committee, I can certainly agree, <coughs> agree with you. So thank you. Could I, could I also add my um, thoughts to that, too, since I was the liaison before you? He was invaluable. <coughs> he did an absolutely fabulous job in keeping things um, above board is, is the only thing I can think of. But he, he really knows his stuff. And whenever there was a question about what kind of mix or is this going to be a problem, he'd go out there and he would work with it and make sure that there wasn't a problem with it. Um, so I would like to also uh, add my thanks for his time. Do we have a motion? I move that we approve consent agenda item A. I second. Uh, thank you. We have a motion and a second. Ms. Cornell. Mayor Pro Tem Pollock. Aye. Council Member Giacomino. Aye. Council Member Higgins. Aye. Council Member Johns. Aye. Council Member Hansen. Aye. Council Member Klein. Aye. Mayor Smith. Aye. Motion. Uh, item number A is uh, approved unanimously. Item number three. Presentation of the City of Bisbee Annual Audit Report for the year ending June 30th, 2019 by Stephen Palmer, CPA, Pinton, and Burdick. And that is it, Stephen. I'm not Steve. No, you're not. <laughs> but we're happy you're here, so please, welcome. And I'll ask you to introduce yourself. I know you will. I am Jennifer Frey. When she's done. Um, I am a, a manager with the firm, and I have worked on your audit um, since we started doing it since 2017. Um, and I... It's a coming. It's just kind of waking up. <laughs> I have a nice little slide show. I'm going to kind of... I like to do these things quick and easy because I know you guys are busy, and then open it up for any questions you might have. So I will just jump right into it. So the first items in that I'm going to cover are your, your audit reports. 
So on pages one and two of your financial statements, you have your independent auditor's report, uh, which is, um, sorry, I have no clear, um, is saying that we obtained um, sufficient audit evidence uh, for reasonable assurance that there weren't any material modifications that should be made to the financial statements. Um, your second report is going to be at the back of your financial statements. That's your report on compliance and on internal controls or financial reporting. We didn't have any material weaknesses, no significant deficiencies. We did have a compliance finding. Um, and this is similar to what you had last year. It was just one of the funds that was overextended um, by 12,994. And I think that was a tiny, probably a tiny issue with some of the grants. Um, so we've got that. Okay, as you know, in your financial statements, you can have two sets of financial statements. You have your government-wide, which is your full accrual, um, and you have your, your governmental funds, which are on the, the current resource focus. <coughs> so your government-wide, the big difference between the two, government-wide statements have long-term debt and capital assets, but your governmental funds do not. So this is just some highlights. Um, and if you go in your financial statements in the mb &A, you have kind of comparative little condensed statements that are helpful to look at. Um, so your total net position, which is your equity at year end, is 7.8 million. And what we expect to see over time are, are increases, decreases in that. Um, to, to see, it kind of tells you the health of the, the government. Um, and so it's, it's a number to watch. Um, and so we have a, a decrease of 1.2 million. Uh, for the, the fiscal year, and some of that, uh, let's see, you have, <laughs> on your governmental funds, you have a deficit. That is mostly coming from the pension <coughs> that had to be put on the books uh, several years ago, and that's kind of what threw you under there. Um, but you're combined between your business type funds, your governmental funds, 7.8 million. So these are just some little graphs. So this is on your general fund. This is the governmental fund. Um, that very top line you see there are your total assets for the general fund, which was at 4.3 million. The line right below that was your fund balance, your equity, which was at 3.9 million. And that very bottom pink line are your total liabilities, which was at 492,000 at year end. Um, so one thing I did want to point out is for your fund balance, if you look at your financial statements, you have a committed balance. I think it's 2.1 million. Um, and some of that, the 2 million of that is committed for the construction of City Hall. And so that was a kind of a change we had um, in comparison to last year. This is your general fund cash trend. Um, you see that big increase between 17 and 18, and we had an additional increase in 19. Um, that was those insurance proceeds that came in, and we had some collection of, of some of that receivable for this last year, and so we had another increase on that. This is our revenue and expense. Governmental funds don't have a profit motive. So what we expect to see over several years are those two lines kind of crisscrossing. Um, some years you're going to have revenues in excess as you're accumulating funds for projects, and later you're going to have higher expenditures as you're spending those funds. And so we see that you guys have been pretty close, and you've been doing that crisscrossing like we'd expect. Last year we had the uh, insurance money that came in, and so that kind of gave us a little bump up there. Um, for the current year, so for the current year, we had uh, revenues at 7044000 and for expenses, we had 7287 so we had a slight um, um, expenditure, you know, a net loss for the current year. Um, over the last five years, our cumulative expenditures have exceeded revenues by 518000 Now, I, was, I would expect for next year that those expenses are going to kind of peak up as you guys do the City Hall project. 
Um, and so I'm gonna, I'm, we're kind of expecting that expense to be a lot higher than revenues next year or as that project progresses. Enterprise fund. So these are your full accrual. Um, again, the basic difference between the two is you have depreciation for capital assets, um, and your long-term debt is on the books, um, whereas on your governmental funds, those get run through the income statements, so the balance sheet. Um, enterprise funds, one thing to remember, they should be self-supporting. Um, your revenues should be covering the expenditures of them. So over the past five years, revenues have exceeded in the, the, the wastewater fund by seven or six hundred and forty-six thousand. This last year, we had expenses kind of up and above that. Um, we had expenses of three million, um, and our revenues were at two point four, almost yeah, two point four. Um, now, in 2015, you guys received that big grant. Um, so we had, you know, that has um, kind of been in there, and that's why we had that big peak there. Um, and if, but if you disregard that revenue, that grant revenue that you received, you're having um, expenses in excess of revenues of 1.3 million. And that's just right on the bottom there. Um, so we're just kind of showing, if you disregard that, you have kind of a, a running net loss in there. This is our cash trend um, for wastewater. Now, back in 2018, um, we paid off some debt. We did a bond refunding, and we paid down. I think it was about two million. And so that's that large decrease you see between 17 and 18, and we see um, a, a general kind of increase this year, um, up to 515 in total cash. 64,000. You have restricted your debt service. Sanitation fund. Oops. There we go. Okay, so over um, the past five years on the sanitation fund, we've had revenues in excess of about 86,000. This last year, you have revenues um, in excess of expenditures of 72,000. So that's kind of that what that big um, portion of that 86,000 is. So we're seeing kind of that crisscross here, which we generally wouldn't want to see on a enterprise fund. We'd like to see either those numbers pretty close or those lines pretty close. Um, but it does happen on occasion. Here's your cash trend. So four out of the last five years, we didn't have any cash in there. This year, we actually ended up with 63000 at year end as a result of the revenues um, in excess of expenditures. Mine. Um, each year we've had a, a net revenue in there. Um, so over the past five years, revenues have exceeded expenses by 460000 I have notes on that one. And here is our cash trend. So we've kind of seen this continuing kind of increase in cash um, over the last five years, um, which is a good thing. Council questions? I have one. Uh, at, your, uh, at your State of the City meeting, you mentioned that you've been in black for two years. Mm -hmm. and I want to thank you for that. That's a big achievement. You also mentioned that there were $650,000 that we were able to put toward our long term debt. I didn't see that reflected anywhere in this audit report. Okay. I don't know. That, I'd have to talk to the finance director and let you know, I, I did preface that, was that was prior to the audit. The audit was going on at that particular time. Okay. And there's always, I don't make one of the sound wrong, but there's a switching of funds, not a switching of funds, but reallocation, I think, is the right word, to, to different locations. Okay, thank you. Sure. Yeah, and also on page 43 of your financials, you have your long-term debt. Footnote that'll kind of show that, and then we paid down some inner funds 
that what balances do between the funds this last year. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. Yes. Item number four, consideration and direction to prepare an agreement with Albert N. Hopper, Jr., architect for architectural and engineering services. We have some speakers. Um, prior to that, real quick, I was just going to bring some people up to date where we were. After the uh, fire, we held a town hall meeting uh, on November 20th, I'm sorry, November 30th of 2017. Uh, and that was at the Royale. Um, and I, as I recall, there was 80, 80 some people there. Uh, it was facilitated by um, Melody Green. Um, as a result of that, for those people that actually voted and voiced an opinion, the overwhelming majority wanted the new city hall to be located at the same site of 118 South Arizona as the present or the old city hall. Um, on August, uh, and at that same time, uh, people had uh, ideas about checking other buildings and other locations. Uh, on November 30th, 2017, I held a town hall meeting uh, asking for citizen uh, input uh, regarding location, size of the city hall, and so forth. Um, and I also um, indicated at that point that those buildings that we had learned about or had subsequently been told about had been checked out and the presentation is still on the website and uh, uh, talks about each one of those buildings. And as a result of that, on August 30th, 2018, um, by a five to zero vote of the council, um, the council passed a um, motion for an RFP, RFQ for a &E services. Um, and then um, that was October 15, 2019, and that um, uh, was by a 5 to 0 vote. We had two members that were uh, unfortunately uh, absent at that point, indicating that the location of the uh, city hall would be at 118 South Arizona. The reason I'm bringing that up is because the RFP, RFQ was site specific. So with that, um, we have Lynn Karchner. Mr. Karchner, you've got your three minutes, sir. Welcome. Thank you Thanks for much. coming. You know, I'm uh, kind of the only engineer around here. I've been here for many years. I've run the Disney system, the wastewater system, back in 2003 and got it out from under the DEQ. What I want to do today is give you a few answers for some of your questions. I've been rehabbing buildings, adobe, concrete, lumber, you name it, uh, for through the years because of deterioration from diurnal shifting of uh, the bricks, they'll crawl out from under the, the loads and, and let the trusses drop. And we repaired that for many years. Um, you know, I have no doubt that, uh, that you know, our architect can do the job very well. And I have the greatest confidence in him. 
But if you'd like, I could take you to numerous buildings here in Bisbee and Douglas that have been rehabbed that are much stronger and better than they ever were before. And I would like to see a fireproof building built at, at your building site. And to start with it, put in all new plumbing and electric, and put a new roof on it so you're in good working conditions and see where your money is going to start to run out. Uh, contractors don't want to bid this, and so they really don't, they didn't mess with your contract at all. They're afraid of it. You need a design bill where you keep your hand in there and uh, approve what they do, approve what they're paid for, have one of your city staff keep an eye on them. But, uh, you know, I'm enthused that the thing can be done. Uh, I heard that the concrete had deteriorated. Totally untrue. I'm telling you as a professional engineer, the concrete is okay. You're going to put steel on the outside, steel on the inside, bolt it all together. It's going to be way stronger and stiffer than it ever was before and much better. Hurricane allowance and uh, seismic activity, everything, it's all going to be tied together like a brand new building rather than an old building. So, you know, it will cost you a little more to restore it that way, but everything will be new. And of course, I don't think you have too much nostalgic for these quarters. <laughs> you know, you gotta be wanting to get out of here. So anyway, I, I support Mr. Hopper and what he's trying to do, and I will help you in any way that I can for free. Okay, you get that? You like that? I, I will do it for you. For Good number, sir. <laughs> so, anyway, I, I live in Douglas, but I'm up here two or three days a week, and I'm still doing engineering work. So, thank you, thank you. Coach. I appreciate that, sir. <laughs> Dave Carton. You've got your three minutes, Mr. Carson. Can I pull this out? Sure you can. I'll start. As long as you're going to put it back when you're finished. Uh, my name is Dave Carton, and uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, city manager, thank you. I may be beating a dead horse, so please bear with me on this, okay? Uh, there's a wrong way and a right way to make decisions. You can make them emotionally or you can make them based on the facts. And the first question that I think I'd be asking is, why didn't your ad hoc committee for studying the new city hall have two members from each ward? And then the city staff could have been advisory, but there was only three people on it, two of them were city staff. Um, I went out and canvassed 11 business owners in Warren and in San Jose. And I asked them, would you build a new city hall with the $2 million? And they, they all said, no, it's a waste of money. It's a waste of the taxpayers' money. There's too many other things that it can be done with. Uh, one fellow said, I learned when I was real young to pay your bills first. What do I need to do to, to get that? You're better now. Okay. Let's put it over the side just a little bit. Yeah. There you he go. said, I learned to pay my bills first because I learned a lot about cash flow and the fact that I might be spending too much money. Another one said it's a waste of the taxpayer's money. Um, another one said, uh, well, we've got all the roads going to pot here, not all of them. We've been doing a lot to help the situation, but we need money to take care of our roads and our infrastructure. And uh, I've, I'm an owner of a business here, and I say, what about a new park in San Jose? San Jose does not have a park. There's no place for people to be in the community to come together as families, and there's no equipment for adults and children to use. And uh, another one said, this seems to be a typical attitude here in Bisbee. It doesn't matter because the city's going to do what it wants to do. Well, I don't share that, but... That happens to a lot of people. 
I also talked to two public works employees of yours, and they both said, we don't need a new city hall. This one's fine, this will take care of everything. And I know it's on county property. Um, does the new city hall have any value to the average citizen in this town? No, it does not. They, they can't buy into bricks and mortar and paving and landscaping and whatnot. Um, is it an example of uh, runaway or undisciplined spending? I think it is. I don't think this has been thought out about what the $2 million could do and the rest of the community, as opposed to building a new government building. So I'm asking you as a city council to please think and reconsider what you have voted on. Time's up. Yeah. And uh, <coughs> take a good look at it. Thank please. you. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. I'm not mechanical, as you can tell. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ken Buck. Uh, thank you, Mayor Council. Ken Budge, uh, Ward 1. Uh, you probably have received a, a memo that I asked to be distributed to you about some city hall alternatives. First, let me state that I don't want to be Johnny come lately. I've always supported the city hall being rebuilt. I spent seven years there. I liked it a lot. But over the last little while, after, after Council Member Lou put it on hold, and I started looking at the numbers, seeing it was coming in at one point or two point eight million dollars. And I went on vacation, and I started looking at other towns that I'd been visiting about four different towns, and looking at they've been doing the repurposed buildings. I started to just think, what can we do? And so I produced this situation, but I'm not just leaving it out there, thinking the city's going to do something about it. My first alternative, of course, was. You know, let's buy the Lyric Theater, repurpose it into City Hall, and then buy a, the pay parking lot. Well, I just spent over an hour yesterday with Bob Vint, one of the highly architects out of Tucson. He came down as a favor to me. We went, spent over an hour in the Lyric, went through the whole thing. And I'll be honest, it will not work. We do not have the money to do it. So, but I wanted to do that diligent work, but I couldn't get it done until, until yesterday. So um, that has to come off the table. But I still believe there's other buildings within the city that could be repurposed and get it in under the $2 million. <clears throat> My point being is if we can't make it happen in the old section, there is things we can do with the old city hall. The, 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 the structure itself could be repurposed into some other alternatives, and I would gladly suggest those if I had more than three minutes. But, but I, I would like to consider also things like uh, a, a big building like on consignment. Another one that's come to my, to, to my attention that I haven't had time to research yet would be the, the Catholic Church School, the old school up there, the three-story. That could be repurposed. That would be about the right size. We don't need the high school that's just way too big and, and not enough parking, but the Catholic School might work. There's other buildings we could consider. That, i just putting this out as an alternative for you all to think about if you can't come we can't come in under the two point, the two million dollars. I checked with almost, well, two two major architects out of Tucson, and and I and I've also talked to Al. And his estimate of two hundred and ten dollars a square foot, <clears throat> it's coming in at three hundred dollars a square foot out of Tucson. That's that's the reality of what it takes to build a new building, and there's just not a not a lot of competition out there for low bids. And you don't always want to take the lowest bid hoping that those people will do you a job. So that's my fear that maybe this won't work out. And so I just wanted to think there is other situations. And, and I'm going to do some research and I'll bring back what I can to you for that. Thanks for listening to me. Thanks, Thank you, Mr. Budge. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Ms. Coleman. Um, so this is coming back to you <laughs> from your previous meeting. Um, hopefully you've had some time to um, look at the material that was provided and if you have any questions, we'll be happy to help. 
Mr. Mayor, since I'm the person who put this on hold, mm -hmm. and I have two objections that I noted, I'd like to speak on this issue as an advocate to move this item forward. But uh, before I do that, I'd like to request a waiver of the five-minute rule for me to speak as an advocate. It's going to take me a little bit more than five minutes to do this. Well, actually, you're speaking as a council member, so you're fine. Okay, we'll take that as a rule, and thank you. Um, there were two reasons that I tabled this issue. The first reason was that there was a discrepancy in the closing date, which was listed by a subscription bid company. And if that mistake that they made had been based on the synopsis that the city sent out, then we would have had no responsive bids to that contract and we would have no choice but to go out and advertise again. We spoke with the staff and with the mayor and we resolved that issue. It was an error on the part of the bid company, so that objection is moot. Um, the second reason that I tabled the motion was that I needed time to analyze the proposal from the selected firm and I want to thank the council for giving me that time and I've done a, a, a due diligence review of that proposal and um, I have three problems with it which I want to go into detail but before the, I do that I want to set some context for you as it pertains to our city's unfunded debt. I attended the mayor's meeting on the state of the city on two days before the last council meeting. And at that meeting, I learned for the first time that our debt was $32 million. That's $6,000 for every person in the city of Bisbee. If a tax collector came tomorrow and said, you gotta pay up, that's what we'd pay. Uh, that's our dilemma. How do we take care of that debt? Uh, you mentioned that the at the meeting that uh, $650,000 was able to be sent, paid toward that debt. If we paid $650,000 a year, it would take us 50 years to pay off that debt. If we apply discrete rate of return tables to that debt, it isn't long before the interest overwhelms the principal and we can't get there from here. That's our dilemma. We have a debt that we can't deal with. What's the solution to that problem? I don't know. There isn't one on the horizon right now. Maybe the state of Arizona will decide that Bisbee needs to have an emergency manager like Flint, Michigan, or Detroit, Michigan did, and uh, maybe they'll just dissolve this council in this form of government and take over. I don't know what's going to happen, and I don't think any of us know what's going to happen either. So with that in mind, and keep, it, keep in mind, I'm coming at this from a financial perspective only. I have accepted the site for the new city hall. I've only been on the council for six months, so I'm not going to argue with votes that have taken place before my time. I want this to be done in the most economical way possible within the budget that we have available to us. I'm not in favor of incurring additional debt for the city of Bisbee. That's not on the table for you. So with that in mind, I want to identify the three problems that I found with this proposal. And, and keep in mind, it's a very competent firm. They have the skills to do this job, and they have a very reasonable estimate of the cost of their, for their services. So I take no exception to that. The first problem that I'd like to address is the scope of the project. 9,200 9, square feet, and a, a proposed budget uh, at this point in time, $2.8 million. The scope is excessive. It's 25% more than the current square footage that a staff of 12 people occupies. The budget has gone, I, I've been here six months now, and I've watched the budget go from 1.9 million to 2.2 million to its present position of 2.8 million. And I've seen documents that have been sent to the city manager that suggest that 4 million is a more realistic figure for this building. I agree with that. I think that the uh, concept proposed by the selected firm would possibly take us that high for two reasons. One, the concrete is, no matter what anybody says, it's substandard. It's below code requirements. The rebar is smooth surface rebar, out of position, 
I would not, as a registered civil engineer, certify that building as redeemable unless you encase both sides of that concrete in structural steel. That costs a lot more money than we have in the budget. The add alternates in the proposal cannot be justified economically. We cannot build the complete patio that exists over there now, and a plaza, which is in effect a meeting ground for people in the community, it's just not financially feasible with the budget that we have. The solution, the council must cut back on the scope for this project. We need to get it within a reasonable limit. Starting at 7,300 square feet, which is what the staff occupies now is a good starting position, not 9,200 square feet. Problem two, the, uh, the uh, proposal lists one concept design. Uh, that concept design is premised on retaining the portico that exists over there now. Uh, saving that portico, because it is an unforeseen condition, costs money. We don't know what we're going to find when we tear those walls down and leave that portico standing. That could be a budget buster as far as I'm concerned. It also sets an unreasonable building elevation. By going through that portico, you've established the mezzanine level of that building. You're adding another 10 feet for a, a, a story above it, and you have a basement that you have to deal with. The proposal addresses the possibility of keeping that basement. That's not feasible economically. It also lists two, excuse me, three pairs of bathrooms for the building, which indicates to me that consideration is being given to building a three-story building. And I don't find that economically feasible. This concrete, as I said, is substandard. Three stories are not, a financial, are not financially viable. The solution to this problem is to direct the staff to contract for two additional concept designs a single-story building, a double-story building, within a reasonable scope of 7,300 square feet, eliminating the existing portico. All vertical concrete should be demolished. A new portico can be designed if you want to pay homage to the old one. That's fine with me. That'll probably work within the budget. So, and finally, it needs an engineering cost comparison between the alternatives so that the city, the council, and the staff can evaluate the pros and cons of each concept design. And finally, problem three, once the contract is signed, there's no turning back. The solution to that is to direct the staff to negotiate three services, each one with its own notice to proceed. For instance, the architect gives us three alternatives for, of the building. We decide which one we want, or we decide it's not feasible and can't be done. Then we stop at that point in time and don't proceed any further. If we, if we agree with the concept, then we, then we uh, move on to the next phase, which would be bid document production. Once the bid documents are produced, then we can issue the next notice to proceed to go into uh, contract management services, services between architect, the city, and the construction firm that selected, because this is going to be a bid, a design bid bill, not a design bill. And those three directions to the staff are policy, the budget and the scope, uh, deliverables, we have a right as the city council to ask for those two concepts, and finally, uh, contra contractual safeguards to make sure that if we get in trouble on this, we don't have to go all the way through the construction. We can halt and reevaluate and move from there. Those are the objections that I have to the proposal. It's nothing personal. It has nothing to do with individuals. It's specifically technical, and it has to do with money, which we don't have. So with that in mind, I would like to make a motion. Please sit. I move that we authorize the city staff to prepare an agreement with Albert Hopper Jr. Architect for Architect Engineering Services to include the following directives. Cap the scope at 7,300 square feet, not to be exceeded without council approval. The maximum budget of $2 million, not to be exceeded without council approval. 
excuse me, that was A and B. C, authorized electric firm to develop two additional concept designs. One is a two-story building, one is a single-story building, both concepts without the original portico. D, contract to be, contract to be phased. Concept designs, bid document preparation, and construction management services, each phased with its own notice to proceed. Present concept, present concept designs to council and public for consideration with recommendation. I'll second that. We have a motion and second. We're open for discussion. Um, I have a, a couple questions of uh, uh, council, actually. Um, well, first of all, a, a statement of my understanding that uh, you said council. I thought you meant council. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the lawyer. <laughs> um, my statement is, or my question statement is, that what we're doing here is authorizing the city staff to enter into a contract with Mr. Hopper's firm. And within that contract, that's a negotiated instrument, that certain things can be enumerated in that contract, such as, um, and not to exceed budget of $2 million. Um, how many square feet you want. Um, and I, I, I believe I'm correct on, on that. that. Those are contractual issues. It's correct. Yeah. Um, and that contract has to come back to the council and the council ratifies that or authorizes the signature of that contract. So that if that contract came back and it said that the cost was going to be 2.1 million, then the council at that point has the uh, opportunity to say, no, go back to the drawing board, uh, make it smaller or whatever we have to do to get it back to that $2 million mark. Now, I'm correct on that too, I assume. Correct as well. Or you start the process completely over again. Correct, okay. All right, um, so I would certainly respect it uh, to um, Mayor Pro Tem, um, Paula, because we have discussed this. And um, I'm, I'm wondering if the, these facts that I just put out aren't, in fact, the same basic information that Mr. Pollock's asking for in his uh, directed um, motion. Um, the 7,300 square feet obviously could be negotiated. Uh, Mr. Hopper may, if we say 7,300 square feet until, unless you, ha you have to come back to the council, then if Mr. Hopper goes, I can't do that, I can do 7,800 square feet, and it comes back to us and we then say, no, we want it 7,600 square feet, or uh, what I'm saying is if we allow that negotiation to go on during the contractual negotiation, then it's not coming back and forth and back and forth. And that's that's what I'm, uh, I, I, I guess I'm sort of arguing against your motion at the same time. Sounds like it. Yeah. yeah. But I'm still not clear on what your argument is. That's, that your, your motion is being, uh, is potentially hamstringing the process that is going to take place during a normal contract negotiation anyway. You're wrong in that assessment. Asking for additional alternatives gives the architect more opportunity to use his skills to come up with solutions that we haven't thought of. We're boxing ourselves in if we have already made up our minds that the proposal submitted is the one we want to build. But we, by by us authorizing uh, moving forward tonight, we are not indicating that this is the that we are having a, a building a two story building built with a portico. We're not authorizing. It's what was proposed. It's not sufficient. We need more. 
to make a reasonable decision as to how we're going to spend the $2 million we have without having to borrow additional funds at 4% for 30 years. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not even talking about borrowing. I am talking about it. Well, I'm not. I'm and I, I, I'm, I'm discussing the fact that nobody is talking about anything over $2 million at this point. I could that is that is in the RFP, as I recall, that there was a $2 million figure. Do you have that? I don't have it in front of me. I haven't seen that. All I've seen is $2.8 million as a proposed budget, which is, is excessive. Well, I, I, I was under the impression, after meeting it many times, that the RFP, RFQ, said that it was a $2 million project. Well, then there should be no objection to the point that I put in this motion, that we limit the budget to $2.0 million. Oh, but that, that, in every project that I've ever worked on, $50 million worth of capital construction, we always told the architect what the budget was, and we told him what the square footage was. It didn't mean that it couldn't change. It just meant this is your starting point, work from here. And I, we, had, we need to do that. Right. And I have no issue with the $2 million. Good. I, I, I've said that. It's not needed because it's in the RFP, but I have no issue with that. My, my, my issue is indicating, hamstringing the fact that it must be 7,300 square feet. Um, it reads, 7,300 square feet, not to be exceeded without council approval. I, There's nothing objectionable in my well, mind. No, but when that contract comes back to us, and it's 7,400 square feet, we have to approve that or, or, or deny that. Right. And the, con the architect should be prepared to defend that request. A reasonable request with, with the right justification would result in me saying, I vote for that. Okay, well, I, there's no reason to... <clears throat> you, your, 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 your points uh, are, are made, and my objection is, is made, and, and so uh, we're good. I have a question. <clears throat> the procedure, once, if, if this is approved, the procedure then is to take a look at the design, to go through, not, not to, the design, no, to go this through. Is, if, this is, if this motion is approved, what is the process at that point? An agreement will be prepared and brought back to council. And that agreement's going to have the square footage? Mm -hmm. It's going to have um, the two, two, uh, two million dollars. Mm -hmm. What about the other points that Mr. Pollock made? Um, is that also going to, to, that type of thing is also going to be uh, considered in that process? Well, because would, because when you read that, well, I'm thinking that's the process well, that, that we go through. Was my yes. point, but yes, exactly. if you're okay. asking a question and then you're I know I'm sorry, I'm sorry, right, right, right. <laughs> now, Mr. Hopper would work to um, prepare a design. Um, he would bring that to council for approval <coughs> before moving forward with um, the engineering phase, and then once it was engineered. And the council would make the determinations with that up for bid based on the estimated engineer's estimated cost to build. And then bids would come back and the council could decide whether or not the bids were within their budget to proceed. So there are steps at which the council has the opportunity to move forward or not um, based on the outcome of each step. Does that help? Partially, okay. <laughs> I'm just concerned about some of the things that uh, Council uh, Mayor Pro Tem uh, Pollock has said. Uh, not the 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 two million dollars, the amount of square footage, that's all in the process. The other two points that you made, I'm sorry, I've already forgotten what they are. Two deliverables, a single story and a double story at 7,300 square feet versus the 9,200. 
as proposed. <coughs> we reduce the scope, that brings the budget down. We get two options to choose from based on engineering analysis of their cost and their value to the community. We base our decision on that. Okay, but isn't that what part of the, what the process is going to do? Yes, so, so this um, is a preliminary analysis that's um, been provided on this based on the budget needs. Uh, once there was an agreement in place, um, the architect would determine what the actual need for space is. So for example, you know, I see that the preliminary analysis includes 300 square feet for the city manager's office. I don't need 300 square feet for the city manager's office. Um, and, and we've talked about several things um, that are in here. This current preliminary analysis of space and budget um, states that it doesn't include the public works department. Um, looking at the square footage, um, we could easily include the public works department. So it's a matter of working with the architect um, to say, yes, that's your preliminary analysis, but here are actually um, ways that we can configure space to make it very usable and include the public works department. So that okay. would be part of the ongoing process. Okay. So that right. whole process would take into account what uh, Mayor Pro Tem Pollock has said. I mean, it, uh, well, those ideas, not specifically those ideas, right. but what um, the process includes those factors yes. that would be looked at. Yes, yes, okay. we're going to, right. And, and actually, the, the drawing that is in here is, is a concept sketch for the site. Right. It's not a final design right. by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, it doesn't even now need to be one the, of the three. Yeah, let me let me let me indicate real quick that the 96, Two, 90, 90, 96, 9200 yeah. square feet that came from a prior city manager that was looking at and without any pricing put together with it or anything else and that figure came from a prior city manager this is not what Mr. Hopper has gone through and decided we needed because we need to get him on board before he goes through and decides right. what we need. Right, yeah. So all the, that, that, the negotiations and all of that would be... Yeah. Right. Okay, thank you. Anything else? <clears throat> so the, the process that uh, we were intending to put in place uh, up here that would cover... Uh, Mr. Paul's concern? Do you feel that way? No, oh. not at all. And your objection is? My objection is that you always give the architect a square footage and a dollar amount to work from. It can evolve from that point into more than what's in paper, but he needs that figure and that square footage to adequately come up with his level of effort to do the job. And he's going to base his fee on that, that number, that's those two what numbers. They're going to do with the contract. It, there's no harm in directing the city manager to work within parameters. All my motion does is establish parameters for this project so that we don't end up with a runaway train that we cannot control anymore financially. It's already been suggested by people in writing, and I have the documents here, that this project should cost $4 million. Four million dollars at four percent for thirty years is six million nine hundred dollar repayment. We can't afford that. That's twenty five percent of our unfunded debt. Now, do we want to put that on top of it, on top of what we already owe and can't pay? No, we don't. That's okay, 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 okay. Well, there, well, 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 well. <laughs> Mr. Paul, if your motion, if if the motion is simply $2 million, isn't that the stopgap that we're really looking at? If he can build a, a, a 10,000 square foot building for $2 million, isn't that the stopgap we're at? Is the $2 million and not the size of the building? No, it's both. They are both related to each other. At well, of course they are, but- the, Well, but then you ask me a question and I answer. No, no they're not. Well, I, I, okay. I, Respectfully, 
disagree. If you have a, a, fig, a dollar figure, then you can only build into that dollar figure. So, okay. Any other any other statements, questions? Ms. Cornell. Mayor Pro Tem Pollock. Nay. You made the motion, sir. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was answering his last question. Councilmember Giacomino. Aye. Aye. Councilmember Higgins. Aye. Councilmember Johns. Aye. Councilmember Hansen. Nay. Councilmember Klein. Nay. Mayor Smith. Uh, nay. Um, but I want my vote to reflect the fact that it is uh, has nothing to do with the architectural firm. It's the restrictions placed within the motion. And with that, the motion passes uh, four to three. Resounding. I have copies of this if you need them. Yeah, Ms. Coronado will use this one. Item number 5. Okay. Okay. Discussion and possible direction on the proposed fee schedule. Put the room empty here. <coughs> Ms. Coleman. Yeah, so. Um, uh, you don't, one, yeah, uh, would, do you want to speak before? I'd like to. That would be fine. Uh, if, I'm sorry, Ms. Coleman. Let's have uh, Ms. Coleman. about the wording of this agenda item. All of you have received an email from me um, delineating the statutes required um, involving agendas. And um, as the statute, open meeting law statute suggests that agendas should be worded um, with sufficient information that the public should be able to understand the content, what is going to be discussed. I don't believe that the wording of this agenda item any, in any way indicates what is going to be discussed, a proposed fee schedule. So I'm hoping that the specificity with which you just passed the last agenda item will also transfer to future agenda items and that when you write an agenda item that there would be sufficient information for the, public, <coughs> the general public to know what is being discussed. Over the weekend, since Thursday, I have asked many people if they had any idea of what the fee schedule was. Just discussing, just saying discussion and possible direction on the proposed fee schedule, and nobody <coughs> answered that what they thought a fee schedule was. So, given the fact that these are fees that are going to be increased for the most part, I understand that you will be deciding on this fee schedule at, a, at a, another future meeting, but it would have been helpful. And it would be helpful in the future if we can put as much detail in these agenda items so that the public can adequately understand what is being discussed. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Ms. Chapin? Donna? I'm sorry. I'm trying. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you know, Thank you. You need to speak in, into the mic, please, ma'am. What? Speak into the microphone. There you go. You can. We can. It'll move down. Yeah. 
There you go. Oh, it's Yeah, you can just hand it to this yeah. city manager. She's mechanically a, a deaf here. Thank you. Just call me. Um, so I did work with the staff looking at the fees that are spread throughout the current city code. Um, to look at uh, if the fees were adequate um, to cover the city's cost of providing the services that the fees are associated with. Um, also, uh, a way to put those fees all in one place so that you didn't have to necessarily find the section of the code to find out what the associated cost um, would be. Um, they're in um, creating a fee schedule um, what is in your packet and what has been posted on the front page of our website for very close to 60 days. By the time you take action, we will meet the 60 day requirement. Um, is a comparison of current fees that have been pulled from different places within the ordinance and then a proposed fee schedule um, moving forward that would supersede the fees that are currently um, in place. So, this is your opportunity <laughs> to have some discussion and provide direction. Um, uh, you know, I'm willing to take any questions or um, make any clarifications perhaps that you'd like to have. Um, also, do know that this will come back um, for adoption. So if this is not your final decision, um, this is letting me know do you want it to come back for adoption? Does it look like what you anticipated? Is there anything we can do um, to make it more readable or usable? Sure. I have a question. Sure. There's a lot of NAs in the, in the uh, fee schedule that I didn't understand. Um, as far as, oh, okay. So um, the liquor, so for example, I love this. Liquor license application processing and posting fee. Um, there would not currently be one within your current city code. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, there's no, I, I found no mention to the fees for the nuisance ordinance, which I objected to as too, too, right. too high. Yes, so at the time that we were working on the short-term rental ordinance, the nuisance ordinance, and the animal ordinance, um, it seemed like 
those have the potential to be adopted ahead of the fee schedule. Um, and at that time, those fees were going to be established with that adoption. Um, we will need to go back and add those to the fee schedule once, act well, we can add the short-term rental one, that one once right. adopted. Um, but for nuisance and animal, we will have to go back and add those to the fee schedule once the ordinances are put in place. But because the ordinance doesn't exist, there's no fee associated with it. Thank you. Uh -huh. One last question. Sure. I noticed in the fees for building permits yes. that it, there was a there was a steady progression down in percentage of the project value versus fee. It went from like 3.9% down to 0.7% as you got higher in value for the construction project. What formula was used to arrive at those figures? Um, this actually was um, a collaboration with um, Dan Cockworth, who um, is at the county planning department and have been processing our building permits for several months. Um, so we worked with him on approximating how to get our um, fees in line, more in line with what he felt would be appropriate for for these values. So that's that's how it was derived. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Right, and a lot of these fees were also based on, on research of, of uh, other cities in Cochise County kind of make them all, uh, or make us more competitive. Some of these haven't been changed in uh, 30 years or more. Questions over here, comments? Yes. I have a question. Um, there, <clears throat> in the code, there is a uh, fee schedule for low income, and I didn't see that on, on this. So is that something um, that's no, separate? No, uh, thank separate? you. Thank you for pointing that out, and the clerk and I will make sure that we can get that incorporated. Thank you, I appreciate that very much. Yeah, that's present within the individuals, and the, you know, I, uh, I was after this when I first came into office uh, three years ago, and it's, it's finally coming about to get all these into one place so that we can, if we have a change, we have one place to make that change instead of throughout, you know, because we find that we get them we drop too many. Then, Joan, I, I believe that we also talked about just changing the language in those sections to allow staff to make adjustments for low income rather than cutting an exact amount. But we will definitely take okay. another look at that and make sure that we're on the right track. Because I know that that's been yeah. a concern. Thanks. Yeah, we'll definitely do that. Thank you. Are we are we ready to? Um, well, no. I guess I have a concern. Okay. Um, I would rather um, hold off making any decisions until we have a complete packet, because we have things that you say you're still going to add to. Um, oh, is it, well, this would be direction then we're not to making a decision to review okay. that and bring it back to a future meeting. So whether you would like to um, have this brought back for adoption at your meeting on the 21st or your meeting on February 4th. Um, if you feel that um, you'd like to see it again, we yeah. can bring it back on the 21st, and then you can decide, to, you make a decision on the 4th. Because, yeah, I would like to see it in, in a complete form before I make any decision on how to act on it, because I'd like yes. to be able to Yeah, so we will clarify that, that yeah. question. And then did you have anything else other than the specifics about the low-income adjustment? Not at this okay. time. Okay, okay, perfect. Okay. If you think of something, let us know, because mm -hmm. we can certainly address that before your next meeting. Yeah. We're not even voting on anything to that. We're just, yeah. Yeah. we're just providing direction to the city manager yeah. that they're on the right track. Uh, I, I think that everybody is in agreement with that, okay. and that uh, please do uh, continue with the change of the low income and bring it back to us um, so that we can uh, peruse that. Yeah. Um, is that going to have to be uh, a counselor? Is that going to have to be uh, that addition have to be advertised in additionals? 60 days? No, anytime you do a new ordinance or ordinance change, you'll just update your fee schedule. It will not have to be re-advertised because it will be incorporated or that new change relative to the new ordinance and the new fees will be incorporated. Sure. Okay. Great. Thank you. All right. Item number uh, six.
possible approval of a motion to go into executive session for the purpose of discussing and consultation with the city attorney to provide legal guidance with respect to a notice of claim, pending litigation, and dismissal of open meeting law complaints against the city. <coughs> I move that we enter into uh, executive session for the purpose of discussion and consultation with city attorney to provide legal guidance with respect to a notice of claim, pending uh, litigation, and dismissal of OML complaints against the city. Per ARS uh, 38-431.03, a three four. Second. We have a motion. We have a second. Those in favor, signify by stating aye. 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 Opposed, nay. We are in executive session. Are we leaving? Yes, ma'am. But we're coming back. <laughs> so don't go too far. Those in favor of coming out of executive session, signify by stating aye. 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 Opposed, nay. We're out of executive session. And <coughs> our next item is city manager's report. All right, I will try to be really, really quick. On minimum wage, we did make adjustments to fire department wages, pretty much, you know, across the range because we needed to <coughs> pull all employees up um, to minimum wage. So adjustments were made. Carrie reviewed it. They should still be within budget. Um, I think you had prepared for that when you did your last budget and rent employee should be fine there. Um, we have a paperless option available um, for packets in the future. Um, and I think we have five. Um, but I'm going to pick up a couple And extra. we'll pick up a couple more so we can have an iPad loaded with the agenda and ready to go for you if that's the way that you would prefer um, to get it. Um, Nina tried it last night. Last night. And um, the Arts Council loved it, the Arts Commission. Loved it. So, yeah, thanks to Nina for that. Um, fleet, so uh, vehicles. Um, the city has officially purchased or made arrangements to purchase all of the vehicles that we had from the county. The county had asked us to take possession and insure the vehicles ourselves. Um, and uh, some of them we have purchased um, two police vehicles outright, and we're going to. Um, complete some of the purchases by paying 45 cents a mile that goes completely to the depreciation of the vehicle and paying it off. Um, and we'll have two more vehicles coming to be purchased by the fire department. So um, to supplement the vehicles from the county, we'll have a presentation at your next meeting um, from eFleets, which is the enterprise program for cities. Uh, the police department is looking at um, two leased pickup trucks and possibly a leased pickup truck for public works. Um, those were actually coming in at a savings over what we were paying the county for the vehicles. Uh, and then also a hybrid sedan program for police response vehicles going forward. So that presentation will be at your next meeting. Um, the city attorney is going to send out an evaluation form. It's time for my six month review, believe it or not. <laughs> and that's going to, I know, where did the time go? That will take place on February 4th. So you have plenty of time to respond to the attorney. And then um, just to let you know that I um, have been meeting with folks and there's interest in um, putting a potential proposal together to Habitat to bring kind of the first habitat program into town. So um, I'll update you. It would be in Saginaw and I'll update you as I move forward. Great. That's it? That's it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Hanson. Yes, thank you. Um, <clears throat> youth Council, we've been having a significant amount of problems in trying to get uh, some of the get youth involved with the youth council. So um, I met with the city manager and we came up with the, an idea of doing a presentation and the Boys and Girls Club has been nice enough to let us use their facility. So we will have a youth council presentation this Friday, uh, January 10th at 4 o'clock. Uh, anyone from the age of 13 to 17 are invited. Please get the word out. Uh, also parents are invited. Uh, if they want to see what it's all about. But this is the opportunity for uh, youth to, uh, to be a voice for the, the 50 years. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
That is notice, correct? Yes, it is. And yes. so it is notice. So, uh, council is as well. Ms. Klein. Okay. Um, I, I'm bringing up again the um, news dissemination, city news, and transparency. Um, I kind of feel like a broken record at this point. Um, you know, I. I'm going to try to not be really rude here. Um, but when we're finding out, as council members, we should be kept informed of whatever's going on within the city. Instead of finding out on the street and sitting there with egg on your face because you have no idea what people are talking about. Or, you know, I get a text that says, have you seen the newspaper today? Um, and that was on the eminent domain. And, you know, Hillcrest is just one of those, um, you know, just one of the things. And um, yes, we had to deal with them one about a year and a half ago or a year ago or whatnot. Um, but removing all the, the tenants, um, even though it was for safety reasons, I understand all of that. But to learn about it, you know, when we come to a meeting, and not really have any answers or anything like that. Um, that was that was hard. I mean, it was hard for them. It was hard for us. And then to get a text, you know, about the eminent domain issue in the paper was, you know, and then I get, is that what you had planned all along? Well, no, we didn't have anything planned. But it would have been nice to have some kind of information or a heads up or. This is a possibility, or, um, and then the other thing was Erie Street. You know, and it almost seems like we're just putting all these bad suggestions into a bowl and pulling them out to see what we're going to stir the pot with next. Um, however, it would be nice for council, all of council, to at least have some kind of warning that this may or may not be coming up, um, just so we can get our facts together, and when the public asks us, we can have some type of an answer or, you know, something, some kind of a plan. Um, and, um, and then the other thing that I have is um, I've been getting a lot of questions on the Charter Review Committee, and in our charter, we're all equal. Mayor, council, we're all equal. Um, but it seems like you, Mr. Mayor, have your hands in everything with the charter review. And that's pretty inappropriate. And my understanding is that you also gave them a notebook or papers or whatnot on suggestions that you wanted. Um, I guess I would, for transparency or for information, I am requesting that uh, uh, a copy of that as to what your suggestions are. Okay, Ms. Ms. Coleman is sitting next to me at Charter Review, and so I think if I was being inappropriate, I'd be told, but um, that's fine. And I believe that uh, um, Ms. Coronado is, is present at Charter Review, um, and so you may believe what you wish to believe. Uh, as far as my uh, suggestions, that was provided the first day for the first couple of chapters. Uh, it wasn't a secret, and uh, they were passed out to everybody, so I have no issues with you having a copy of them. Go, buddy. I move to be adjourned. Second. Those in favor of adjournment, signify by stating aye. 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 Uh, opposed, nay. Ayes have it. Hold the nose. Mm -hmm.